and gentlemen, this is another episode of Caribbean Current. This is Jason Skywalker. This is to me, Caribbean.com, Caribbean Current. And as always, we're trying to educate people about things from the Caribbean culture, from one of the 35 countries, and just amazing things happening in the world. And I especially like to find things of excellence that represent our culture. So right about now, I have definitely the most amazing gymnast to represent Jamaica. I got introduced to her by seeing a video online. I was like, we have a gymnast that represents Jamaica? Yeah. And she wicked? So, you know, it was amazing to see her perform. We're gonna do some B-roll where you'll see her performing while we're doing this interview. But yo, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce you to Danusia Francis, right? Did I say it properly? Um, Danusha, but yeah, thank you for that. Danusha love- Francis, I'm sorry, darling. That's all right. <laughs> So first and foremost, big respect for representing Jamaica. She has a cool Jamaican flag on her on her shirt. You can see right there, right there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, we, we call it Danusha. So, so right now, so you're not in Jamaica. Where are you now? So I'm in the UK. Um, this is where I live and train. That's where you live. Well, you know, a lot of our athletes are there. By the way, Raheem Sterling does come from my neighborhood. Keep on telling people the same. <laughs> Wish he had played for Jamaica, but that's all right. That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> Maybe still one repping. Day. Huh? Maybe one day. <laughs> hey, still repping excellence. You know it. Yeah. Um, so tell us a little bit about your, your, uh, how your journey, I guess your family's journey coming to England and then you getting into gymnastics. Gym, gymnastics. So um, half my family's Polish and half my family's Jamaican. So my mom's Polish, my dad's Jamaican. Um, so my parents were actually split up and I am definitely closer Sorry. to my mum. No, that's all right. Um, so actually with me um, representing Jamaica, it's actually been a really sort of cool journey to really discover my Jamaican heritage and just be really proud of it. I was always really proud of being Jamaican anyway, like seeing all the athletes every year in the Olympics and just I always thought it was so cool and I was the first to tell people that I'm Jamaican and now to actually kind of be able to explore my roots more and just be more in touch with it throughout this process has been amazing so I'm not don't really have a relationship with my dad but when I um, reached out and got my um, citizenship and everything I um, got in touch with some other family members mm. so uh, unfortunately I lost one to Covid one of the ones that I got close oh, to no. yeah so that was um, horrible but um, it's been nice to get to know some family members on that side and like I said just get more in touch with my Jamaican side of my family. Well you know I, I don't know if if your family has shared with you once we found out the rest of us <laughs> we've all been very excited about you because you know you're following in the line of you know the bobsled team we have an ice hockey team you know and we've had several bobsled teams actually we even have two right now women I mean so, uh, and we're very proud of what you're doing. And, and then of course, how you do it with such excellence. So, so, so coming up, um, we don't normally see women or men of color in the realm of gymnastics. So what was that journey like, considering you don't appear as most gymnasts appear? Like, you know, Nadia Kamenenci, for example, is what people expect. So how did that journey go? Um, I think I was quite lucky that from the age of nine I trained in London so if you were going to find more mixed race and black people it was going to be in London rather than sort of northern parts of the country so um, most of the I trained with luckily um, were black so we kind of had our little camaraderie and um, so I never kind of felt as an outsider in my training but like you said a lot of the role models growing up were white and um, kind of, you, you never really saw black gymnasts on the podium until recent years. Um, so kind of just to come up through the ranks and now to see very often, we've obviously got Simone Biles from America, who's the greatest of all time and always on the top of the podium. So now for myself and I imagine all the young black gymnasts around the world to constantly see black gymnasts at the top, it's incredible. And to kind of be a part of that movement and also to bring in more countries um, I think it's really, really cool, and it's amazing to be a part of it and see the direction it's moving in. Yeah, I, yeah for real. Like, like, honestly, I mean, I'm old enough. I'm old enough to remember Nadia coming at you. Like, I'm, I'm that old. Um, <laughs> but, <clears throat> and, 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 but, but she was appealing because she was a little kid. 
on this huge stage during the time of the Cold War. Like a lot of people don't like she escaped um, the communists to be able to to perform and do her thing. So there was this whole story around her that drew us in. But like you said, since then, until um, Simone Biles and a couple others, we're like gymnastics, like we ain't watching that. And so when when you come along, it's like, for real, so you're, it's, and you're not just a person of color, you're representing um, an, a country, although very popular, but not normally in the mix. Yeah. So that's wild. Now, tell us a little bit about your journey competition wise you know you know what made you decide to go from one level to one level because you're about to go to the olympics which is the highest stage um tell us about coming up through the ranks and how you decided okay i can go to that next level i can go to the, what was that journey like um so as soon as i started gymnastics at age five i loved it and um kind of got talent scouted quite early on um and then when I was nine years old, I had to go to boarding school because the gym that I was at that was near my mum's house was um, getting demolished and made into a car park. Oh, no. Yeah, and so I can't, I'd been off for this scholarship, but my mum didn't want me to go, obviously, at that young age, but I went for the trial, loved it, and I was like, yeah, let me go, like, this is great, and I just was so obsessed with the sport, and obviously she knew I had talent, but she um, more just wanted me to do what I loved, um, so... She always reassured me that I can come home at any time and I never felt like I was forced into going to boarding school and I actually had the time of my life. So, um, And I've been at the same gym club ever since. And um, so I started competing for Great Britain and um, did Europeans, World Championships. And then in 2012, I was a reserve for the Olympics. And then I went to UCLA on a college gymnastics scholarship. So in America, representing um, your college. And that was just incredible. And I thought... I wouldn't do any international competitions ever again, but competing at UCLA, I just fell back in love with the sport and kind of saw it from a new perspective, a new performance side of things, rather than it all being really serious and kind of intense. It was more about like showing off what you can do and what you worked hard for. And um, also there, like I've always loved having curly hair and kind of embraced um, the things that made me stand out. So in my floor routines, I got to have some like choreography with my hair and stuff like that. And I just became like the best version of myself inside and outside the gym. And this really inspired me to want to carry on competing. Um, it wasn't really going to be feasible with Great Britain because um, I wasn't able to travel back for any of the squads or the competitions. So I looked into it, looked into Poland and Jamaica. Um, like I mentioned, I'm half of each and um, saw that another gymnast was competing for um, Jamaica. So reached out to them and then kind of started the process. And um, oh, yeah. wait, wait. So, so who, who's the gymnast that, that, that competed for Jamaica? Who's that? Tony Ann Williams. Tony Ann Williams. Okay, okay. I need to look her up. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So she was kind of like the first one, I'd say. And um, since then, like her mum as well has been quite a big part of it and building and just sort of getting our team together. So we've got a few boys and a few girls and we've all done now Pan American Games together last year. And it's really cool because every time we step out on the international floor, we're making history. And um, after I did graduate from UCLA in 2016, I was ready to stop gymnastics at that point. And then I, I stopped for sort of a year and a half. And then just something inside me was like, I wanted to do the Olympics as a childhood dream. And then also kind of like looking into it further, just how amazing that could be for Jamaican gymnastics to go there and to keep continuously put us on the map and just to show all the local gymnasts training in Jamaica too, like what's possible. And yeah, just to keep pushing it forward because that's it's, it takes that the international people to kind of keep pushing it forward, help get the funding to allow the younger ones to blossom. So all of that's kind of like an added bonus, but yeah, 2019, I managed to qualify. So made my dream come true. And, and like I said, on the bigger picture, helping to just keep pushing the sport forward. That's absolutely amazing. Now, um, are, you, are you the, is there, is there like a whole team going to represent um, Jamaica at the Olympics or are, are you like the only one? So I'm the only one that's qualified. Um, we don't have enough for a team at the moment. So at the World Championship, we had to compete. We compete at the same time, but kind of as individuals. Um, unfortunately, none of the boys qualified, um, and then mm. only one one girl can qualify. So, obviously, mm. gentlemen, gentlemen, we need to step that up. Come on, come on. Yeah. 
you know, back, back in the nineties, you know, the women were totally showing up the men in, in track and field. So mm -hmm. saying this is nothing new. All right. So, okay. All right. All right. So, so, okay. This is all, this is fascinating. So, <laughs> so, so, I mean, I'm learning more about this than I thought. I, I thought it was just you. So there's a whole infrastructure for Jamaican gymnastics based on what you're saying. And and if somebody you're saying they're like they raise money for them, somebody wants to donate to it. What what where where's the website? Where is where do they go? So actually, at the moment, we're raising money to get some new crash mats um, for the national facility in Kingston. So if anyone just goes onto any of the social media, which is Gymnastics Jamaica, um, you'll find the links for that. And I've actually posted it on my Instagram as well. So just and what is your Instagram? Um, Danusha brought this. Yeah, so just have a look, and if you can donate anything, um, they just need some new mats because they just don't have the right quality of mats to help teach the young gymnasts the right skills. So you obviously you do lots of drills and everything. You might have to land on your back, and you need to have nice soft mats. Well, this is amazing. So, and I guess this is pretty. And and I already knew that. Um, one of the reasons why we don't see people that look like us in gymnastics is the equipment and structures necessary. Like uh, our communities don't know how to afford it. So so clearly this is very important and we have to raise money for it. All right, so we're, so people go to Denisha's um, IG page, Denisha Francis, D-A-N-U-S-I-A-F-R-A-N-C-I-S. -S. Hey. Go to her IG page so you can see where you can support um, um, Jamaican gymnastics. Now tell me something. So. Are there um, teams representing some of the other 35 Caribbean countries? I guess you saw them at the Pan Am Games, is, is, is that correct? Yeah, there's definitely. Um, Trinidad Tobago um, have got quite a strong um, team. Um, they're the main ones that we're quite friendly with. Um, but yeah, some of the Caribbean countries are really up and coming. And um, we also have the Jamaica Classic, which is a yearly gymnastics competition held in Jamaica. And mm -hmm. um, they invite all the Caribbean countries that are starting in gymnastics. So keep an eye on that. And if there's any ones out there that haven't um, took part yet, then definitely take part next year. I mean, and uh, yeah. And then of course, Jamaica, we got Denisha. So we're just going to dominate. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Germinate. That being said, <laughs> that being said, um, so going to Olympics, it, um, it, is there any other Caribbean nation that's sending a representative to the Olympics here, or you're the only one? Oh, I feel like surely there's probably got to be one or two if you think of women's and men. I couldn't tell you off the top of my head. I'd have to look and get back to you. Um, yeah, have um, to producer, up. producer, please look that up if we have any other Caribbean representative, please. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> no, this, no, this is all fascinating because I didn't know any of this. Yeah, that's all right. So, all right. So, Denisha, Denisha um, qualifies, which, which, congratulations. I mean, that's just excellent right there. Um, what are the routines that you, you'll be focusing on when you perform in the competition? Yeah. In the I do artistic gymnastics, so there's four events for women, which is the vault, so you run up and then you just do like a single vault over the top, um, and then there's the bar, so we've got high bar and a low bar, and then the beam, the, the long plank of wood, right. the floors, that, the slightly sprung floor. Um, so I'll be doing all four of them, um, and yeah, at the moment, sort of getting through my routines and just building fitness for floor, and um, I got some new choreography during this extra year, so that was pretty good. Um, and trying to do, trying to do a new skill. So it is a really difficult skill, but if I can get it, it'll be really cool. Um, obviously, I've got a routine without that skill, and then if I can add that in, that is for the bars, then that will be incredible. That, that well, okay. So, so, so you're real. You're, you're <laughs> really the real deal here. Okay, all right, all right. So, okay. I, I, you know, I'm gonna pretend like I even have that skill. Like, could never. Like, I remember when I first saw, I saw people doing this, and I'm like, how do they not break their bones? You, you must have injured yourself several times over the years. Yeah, yeah, had a few injuries, um, broken ribs, broken foot, broken wrist. Um, I had an injury where my hamstring was like coming off the bone. Oh, that was painful. <laughs> Hold well, on, did you just say your hamstring was coming off the board? Yeah, 
like right at the top of your leg. Oh, that was, it hurt to walk and everything. That was intense. That's, that's, that's brutal. That's, that's huge, uh, unusual, cruel punishment. Oh. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we have the competition coming up, but before we go to Olympics, um, I, I'm sure as, as you've been, so you've been representing Jamaica since the Pan Am Games, right? That was the first time you represented Jamaica, right? Um, since 2015 World Championship. World Championship, 2015 World Championship. So that's six years. So over these six years, what is that relationship between you and Jamaican people and government, or even Jamaican business? What has that been like? And yes, I'm alluding to this coffee that you keep on making a big deal. <laughs> <group. laughs> um, it's definitely just grown and grown. And I think a really cool turning point for me was um, this event that I did. It was here in London at the O2 Arena and it was this sort of showcase about gymnastics and we just put on these performances where there wasn't the same competition strict rules and they wanted you to show off your personality and to engage with the crowd and I think that's what us Jamaicans do best. So I kind of really pulled out all the stops and put on a good show and kind of had a few routines that sort of went semi-viral and that was when I got a lot of new followers from Jamaica and from the Caribbean. So now definitely when i post on instagram i've still got those followers and they're always showing me so much love and support um and yeah and through that obviously like you mentioned moy hall coffee reached out and wanted me to be a brand ambassador and that was just really cool too because it's just that support and you feel like like you're just accepted and just like i said supported and that's all you can ask for when you're working day in day out Does that have like a little bit of a pause, a bit of hi I'm Denisha Francis and I'm a Moy Hall Estate Coffee brand ambassador. My secret to successfully preparing for the Tokyo 2021 Olympics is definitely to have a cup of Moy Hall Estate before and sometimes during training. Just to have that sort of, it does help, and I don't want to call it that, like that help from people, whether it's just a like or a comment on social media, it really does help. But yeah, Moy Hall Coffee, if you haven't tried it, try it, it's amazing coffee. And by the way, that's why I chose the mountain background because that's where the coffee hey. comes from. <laughs> Love it. So, so, so in terms of that, those performances, um, so did they allow you to choose the music, right? So, so in the Olympics coming up, we're going to hear some Jamaican music when you perform. What, 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 what's going to be the, what's going to be the music? What we're going to hear? Um, the music that I've actually got. This is actually a spoiler because no one's seen my routine because I haven't done any competitions. But and it's actually from Charlie's Angels, like the newer movie. Oh, okay. Yeah, and okay. I just, it just happened, it just came up on a random shuffle on Spotify and I was like, oh, this is kind of cool. And it just caught my attention and it was a bit different and a bit more uh, mature. Obviously, I'm an older gymnast, so yeah. So it's not Jamaican, but hopefully I can bring the Jamaican flavour anyway. <laughs> do, do, do you try to throw in like Jamaican dances when you're doing anything? Do you know what? I don't want to embarrass anyone. <laughs> Myself included. Um, so I'll leave that to the girls in the dance hall. <laughs> <laughs> um, tell me something. Um, I'm quite sure if you know if you put in some practice, you could put some of the, some of our Jamaican dancers to shame. I'm sure yeah, that. I'm there. I want to get some some pros to teach me. <laughs> so, you heard that? I'm um, a dancer on cruise. The Nisha wants somebody to show her to the thing. So let's do, fling the show. I mean, let, let's, let's do this. So, <laughs> so tell me something. Um, you know, while we're on that topic, give, give me your, um, five of your favorite dancehall songs and the artists. Oh God, you're putting me on the spot here. I'm actually have the most terrible memory of all time. So I'm kind of the person that will just go on Spotify. I use Spotify. People at Apple versus Spotify, but I'm Spotify. And I'll just sort of put on the genre and I'm always in the car. So I never know the artist or the name. So I'm really sorry, but if you want to educate me and give me your top five, I'll go and give them a listen. I'm going to throw it on me. <laughs> right. Reverse it on you. <laughs> I mean, my, my number one dancehall artist is always, has always been Butcher Band. So that's, that's that's where I'm always going to start. Bounty Killer. Oh, yeah. Sizzler. Oh, yeah. A pair of Fabulous as number four. Mm. And then number five, Bear Sam. Number five would have to be Bear Sam. All right, so so I, I, I just said dancehall. Okay, let's go back in time. Reggae music. 
top really? five reggae artists. You gotta say Bob Marley. You got to. Um, then do we count Sean Paul as reggae? That's dancehall. Okay, put him back in dancehall. Um, you're gonna need to educate me again. I think. I think. Um, um, do you know Do you know Dennis Brown? No. He's the crown prince of radio, Dennis Brown. Dennis Brown, you start um, making. Um, the, the thing with Bobby can cheat and say Peter Tosh, because Bob, because Bob Marley and Peter Tosh are in. Okay. I did actually uh, see Ziggy Marley as well. He can... Ziggy, that that's reggae as well. So, so if, I, if I was to give you a suggestion, I would say. Yeah. Definitely check out Bob Marley, of course. Peter Tosh, um, Dennis Brown, who's the crown prince of reggae. By the way, Dennis Brown has made the most albums of any artist in reggae music. Um, definitely Third World, definitely um, Inner Circle, definitely Jimmy Cliff. That's a royalty of reggae music, you know, um, Gregory okay. Isaacs. I'm going to send all that to you. So, so it's That's me. I'll listen to it all through Tokyo Olympics. <laughs> Get me in the right, right mood. <laughs> all right, all right let, let, let's go into your room. Your room is definitely <laughs> athletes. So yeah. <laughs> who are your favorite Jamaican athletes of all time? Oh, Usain Bolt, of course. Yeah, Sapa Powell. I just think, obviously, you just go straight to track and field, don't you? I mean, you can do football. You have Raheem Sterling in football. You see, okay, unless okay. you're not a Man City fan. No, like, I'm just not a big football fan, honestly. <laughs> I'm going to my ladies, Elaine Thompson and Shelly Ann Fraser, of course. And I'm going to throw out... Well, Jamaican karate is up and coming. Mm -hmm. And I recently... Well, not recently, in the sort of first part of lockdown, did a a Zoom with them, and I've met a couple of them. So I'm going to throw the whole team out, but Alton Brown is one that I've met, and I'm just supporting all of them all the way, so. Alton Brown. <laughs> and I, I used to be on, I used to be on the Jamaica Karate team, actually, so. I oh, think you? Yeah, yeah. Amazing. Back in 1989, yes, I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> Since early. All right, so that, that's some good choices. That's some good choices. All right, Olympics, sorry, Olympics coming up. What do we look forward to? Um, what, what, how does all that work? What are the dates? What are they saying that you have to do? Especially in a COVID Olympics. How does that work? Um, so obviously there's no international spectators, which is obviously a bit of a, a sad thing when we're all coming from all over the world. We obviously wanted maybe some family and friends there, but you know, it's COVID. We've got to do what we've got to do. Um, right. So at the moment, it's kind of all in the works. We might have a Jamaican training camp at, in a different location um, in Japan beforehand, um, but nothing kind of confirmed yet. So just waiting on that. Um, but obviously we will, no matter what, get out to Japan like a week or two in advance um, to obviously acclimatize and get training on the right equipment and yeah, and then go for it. And my competition is July the 25th, I believe. So we're quite early gymnastics. Sort 25th of of July, okay. Yeah. Okay, we're well, definitely going to be watching that. All of us in Jamaica, big support, you know. And who knows, next year I might have a big movie about you. <laughs> well, <That'd be> cool. <laughs> so, 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 oh, Bob said he was cool runnings. Yeah. Know, gym runnings. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. we were saying last time when all of the team was together, we were like cool tumblings, maybe. Cool tumblings. Uh, okay, okay. Cool tumblings. <laughs> I think somebody needs to go ahead and uh, copyright that immediately. <laughs> <coughs> cool tumblings. You heard that? I, I, I'm going to call up Leon and see if we can get Disney to sponsor that. Hey. Cool tumblings. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Um, all right, Denisha. Well, we're going to be looking forward to your competition. Is, is there like anybody um, in the competition that you're looking at um, as, as the person that you'd probably like to beat? Like to beat? Ooh. Simone Biles, I don't know. <laughs> well, Simone Biles is, is the greatest of all time. So mm -hmm. we'll just let her do her. Um, I would say, let's have a think. I would say not really a specific person. I think you can't, in gymnastics, it's not like you're against them head to head and you can't sort of, what they do can't really affect you. So you kind of just have to be your own competition. As cliche as that might sound, you've just got to do your best and then the scores are going to be the scores, so yeah, myself. <laughs> well, you're representing Jamaica, so we want you to beat everybody. Speaking <laughs> of that, so you had the opportunity to either represent Poland, England, or Jamaica. Um, 
So your mom wasn't disappointed that you didn't choose Poland? Um, I think she probably was a little bit, but she also kind of just, I think she saw that how much more I would fit in as a Jamaican athlete. Um, mm. I speak a tiny bit of Polish and I mean, like we've kind of said before, if you picture a Polish athlete, not that it matters, but you probably wouldn't picture me. Whereas I think <laughs> if you picture a Jamaican athlete, it makes a lot more sense. And just kind of my personality and how I do my gymnastics, it just all made more sense um, to her and to me. So she was supportive. <laughs> and what was that like, you know, coming to the Jamaicans? Like you had to go to uh, the Jamaican High Commission in London. Like what, what was the response like? you know, with the Jamaican Olympic team, but how did that even go? Um, I think the more and more I prove myself, the more welcoming it's become. I would never say it wasn't it wasn't welcome, but obviously once you prove yourself, everyone's like, oh, okay. And then they're just, they start to cheer you on. Whereas before it was like, yeah, yeah welcome. And now it's actually like, welcome. <laughs> like, <laughs> let's go kind of thing. But so before they're like, hmm, I wonder if she's any good. Mm, yeah. Let's see. <laughs> Oh, she's good! Yeah! yeah. <laughs> gotcha. And like we went out to Pan American Games, like some of the other sports and some of the JOA um, staff came to watch and that was just so cool and so nice. And yeah, it's just, I'm really excited to go again and kind of how Pan American Games was, be a part of the bigger team Jamaica rather than, obviously it's lovely when it's just gymnastics, but it's so cool to be a part of the whole team. Excellent. So, so what part of Jamaica does your family live? Um, St. Thomas. St. Thomas, oh wow. I'm from Kingston, so we're right beside it, wow. You know, okay, you, you know that there's going to be a lot of investment and interest in doing business in, in St. Thomas. Oh, really? And, yeah, and I think your the coffee that you're working with is probably part of it is in St. Thomas as well, part of their farms. So, <laughs> thinking of that, and considering your stature as representing Jamaica, you, you ever thought about extending doing business in Jamaica? You know, a lot of athletes don't normally think of the business opportunities after the fact. You, you ever thought about that? Like investing in Jamaica or anything like that? Not necessarily investing in business, but definitely in gymnastics. I want to come over and do a bit of coaching and just obviously just even be in a presence there and just kind of inspiring the girls um, and the boys that are doing gymnastics there. So I think that's probably where my first moves over there would be, um, but maybe down the line. <laughs> this is excellent. Well, Denisha, um, I want to thank you very much for spending time with us because you, you are amazing. You, you, are the, you, are, you are officially an Olympia. 25th of July, we will be looking because, you know, go on to see Jamaican flag on the podium. Yeah. <laughs> But either way, we're going to enjoy watching you, Miss Francis. Before we go any further, is there any last word you want to say to the 2B Caribbean view, Caribbean current viewers? Um, I'd just like to say thanks so much to everyone for all your support, and I cannot wait to do you proud. Ladies and gentlemen, Denusia Francis. She uh, is you. an Olympian. Pardon? Thanks for educating me. I'm about to listen to all them answers. <laughs> yeah, I'll send that to you. An Olympian, she's a TV presenter. We'll talk about that the next time we come around. Um, she is a brand ambassador for um, Coffee from Jamaica. She's going to be um, a coach in Jamaican gymnastics. She's going to take it to another level. She's already inspiring people to do more. And of course, we're going to talk to Leon, see if we can talk to Disney about cool tumblings. Yeah, let's, let's make this happen. Let's make this happen. <laughs> All right, this is Jason Skywalker with Danusha Francis. Danusha, thank you again for making time for us. And we're going to be watching you and we're going to be sharing you in the Olympics, all right? Thank you so much, Jason. You're very welcome. Jason Skywalker, Danisha Francis, Caribbean Current. Big up, everybody.